Okay everybody, this is Mooney Dashcam, and today we're in Whitestone, Queens. We will be entering Malibu in a little while, um, and we're going to be talking about Tommy Lucchese, leader of the Lucchese crime family, one of the most well-known and powerful bosses in the Mafia to ever have lived. And his house is a few minutes away from here. We're going to shoot around Whitestone a little bit and Malibu because they're cool looking and there's a lot to talk about with Tommy Lucchese. Okay, so the house we're heading to, everywhere you search says 104 Parsons Boulevard in Whitestone, but what I found on Google, you can't really find it on Apple Maps, is 106 Parsons Boulevard will get you to the house. A little bit difficult to find, but I made it work. All right, so like I said, we're talking about Tommy Lucchese. His nicknames were Tommy Brown, Thomas Luckies. Um, he was born December 1st, 1899. Been around for a while, of course. All right, let's make this turn. Oh, we're going to turn into some construction. This should be interesting. Okay. So, in 1910, him and his family come to America, settling in Harlem, which was a rough area back then. Uh, the first gang he was involved in was the 107th Street Gang, whose leader was the very well-known and famous Lucky Luciano. His parents hated him being involved in crime, so he got a job at a machine shop. Let's make this turn. I want to be looking at my notes. Getting killed out in Malibu. Well, in my truck, I don't think I'd be the one getting hurt. But that's besides the point. Snake it back and forth. Yeah, so he works in a machine shop, which leads to him losing his thumb and index finger in a machine accident. Which then like kind of launched him, gave him an excuse to not be involved in regular work and kind of go back to crime. He started up a little window washing company after that, but it wasn't really a legit business. It was really just kind of a cover for like an extortion operation, which hey, do what you're good at. And he was good at criminal activity, clearly. One of the most, one of the five families. He's the second boss of one of the five families. Hey. Right now we're on 3rd Avenue. Once you get west of the Whitestone Bridge, that's technically Malibu. It kind of is spread out, the nice area, to more of Whitestone, but technically if you were to be very, uh, um, follow the, the rules on this one, Malibu is past this bridge. So in 1921, his first arrest was for car theft. And one of the officers gave him the nickname Three Finger Brown after a famous baseball player at the time, Mordecai Brown, who had a very similar injury. He lost, it was actually in a machine accident on a farm. He lost some of his fingers, which led to like developments in baseball because he was throwing with three fingers and it was a curveball and blah, blah, blah. That was in like 1905. And that nickname stuck. And then. Luciana and Lucchese called the attention of Joe, the boss, Mazzaria, and then realizing that Lucchese had no problem killing for the mob, uh, it, he fit in well with everyone there, and Luciano even said that he was his favorite hitman, that Lucchese was Luciano's favorite hitman, which, you know, if that's what you're trying to do, he was good at it. This house was never blue. They repainted that, okay. We're gonna be pulling up on the house shortly. Now, the two got caught up in the, I might be pronouncing this wrong, but I think I'll do it pretty good. Castelmarese War between Giuseppe Mazzaria and Salvatore Maranzano. Come on, those are a lot of big names there and I did it good. 
I want praise in the comments. Okay, so yeah, they get caught up in that war, which was like a deadly war. It was a fight for control of New York. Uh, like roughly a hundred mobsters died in that uh, power struggle. And it ended on April 13th, 1931, when Mazaria was killed in a restaurant in Coney Island. And then you pretty much thought it was over then. But then Maranzano ran stuff until September 10th, 1931, where he was killed in his office. Lucchese and Luciano were both involved in that. Ooh, I just strolled past the house. I was looking, wondering if it was redone because these houses are way too big. But it was not. The house is right there. That house. I'm going to pull up here and I'll get a good view of it. I don't know. The tree's in the way. I wonder if I could do a three-point turn and get a nice view of the house. There's a tree right there. I'm going to do it. There's not a lot of people on the street. I just stay parked in the middle of the road. This is the house. Of course, I'll be adding all types of old photos. I'm actually going to turn around. We're going to get a better view of it from the other side. But there's not a tree. But so, yeah, they were involved in the hit on Maranzano, which was a big deal at the time. I'm not supposed to do any of this, but who's going to stop me? Come on, everybody pass that needs to pass. So then uh, Lucchese became the underboss of Gagliano, the Gagliano crime family. After 22 years serving as the underboss, in 1953... Make this turn without dying. Oh, that's do not enter. It's a one way. Oh, I got myself stuck here. Guys, I might go down the wrong way in the wrong way. I might do it. I'm gonna put my hazards on and do it. Come on. Just this is what I do for you guys. Right there's the house. We're gonna get past the tree a little bit. Ah, beautiful, nice view. That's the best view we're gonna get with the trees in front. Now, let me pull off the road so I'm not blocking the road and facing the wrong way. And I gotta do a three-point turn here, here now anyway. So like I said, in 1953, Lucchese became the boss of the Lucchese crime family. So technically, it didn't start as a Lucchese crime family, so he was the second boss. But, um, yeah, he was the boss. So then, he was really good at what he did, so business was booming. He got involved in the garment industry, uh, trucking companies. I'm blocking someone here. got involved with the garment industry, trucking companies, trade associations. And he became friends with Sinatra, Dean Martin. He was like a very well-known, well-respected mob boss, which doesn't happen too often anymore. A lot of guys are hated. He was known for being super generous, made like a lot of his men millionaires. And uh, yeah, rare, rare guy in the mafia. But he was brutal. He was, uh, it's assumed that he killed about 30 people in his mafia career. Which is, of course, not as much as some guys, but especially back then, when it wasn't, like, cool to be a, a crazy murderer, that was wild. So then in 1965, he's admitted to the hospital with a brain tumor and heart problems. And then July 13th, 1967, he died at home 
He moved from this home to Lido Beach in Long Beach, Long Island, Nassau County. Uh, I looked up that house. I believe that house has been demolished. It is 74 Royat Street in Lido Beach. But like I said, I believe it's been demolished. So I looked it up on Google Maps and it's a mound of dirt. So, so yeah, he died in that home in Lido Beach and the funeral was attended by over a thousand people, including politicians, judges, policemen. Now, I think those guys should be a little bit looked at if you're attending the funeral of a mob boss, but uh, racketeers, drug dealers, pimps, and hitmen. And that's pretty much everything I have to tell you about Tommy Lucchese, the one who was the start of the Lucchese crime family, still to this day is around. Hope you enjoyed. As always, leave a suggestion in the comments. I always appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next one.